Uh, in a while, some will come from the short break, but uh, please feel ready to come closer, use the seat here, etc., so that we can have it more as a discussion and thinking together. So um, my name is Eric Bordier. I'm a vacation rental manager in Prague, and I help LiveRes, the number one in vacation rental software in the USA, go global. And we're going to speak to today about leveraging community to take back your power. First, let me tell you a quick story as an introduction, a story about the Gauls. They were fierce warriors. They were even fighting naked to show how brave they were, how they were not scared. And they were using technologies, like uh, they were great at working with iron and inventing the protective clothes that you see here. Now, what's interesting is that they were also very, very busy fighting each other. There were about one million Gauls, and the tribes were used to fight each other. So the day when 50,000 Romans invaded the Gauls and used the technology and tools of this time to protect uh, their fortifications, then that day, uh, the 50,000 Romans defeated the million Gauls, and any resemblance with a fragmented industry that we love is not just random. And for those who think this is London, we're out of reach, no. Watch Britannia, the Romans actually got also to Britain. But that's another story. Now, um, I think We'll, we'll pass this because we don't have much time. Like, uh, so uh, normally, I would syndicate questions from you with Slido, but given that we are a small audience, uh, you can just raise your hand whenever you want. And in the end, we'll have a very short questions and answers to a session we can discuss in the next break, but we'll have to adapt to the short time we have today. But I did organize a session with property managers a few days ago. And you can see that amongst the questions that ranked really at the top of their concerns was, is there a future for small property managers? OTA versus direct marketing, what's the future? And then something about our responsibility towards the local community, etc. So it's really a question on the mind of many property managers today. Where is this industry going? Uh, and do small players, or even average players, have chances to survive, and how? Our rental industry is very fragmented. This is from a session when you have Vacasa, Atleisure, and uh, V-Trips, and uh, One Fine Stay on the stage, and even though uh, it was like 8,000 units, 50,000 units, maybe 10,000, I don't know, 2,400. Together, they represented only 0.5% of the industry. So it's well accepted that we are a very fragmented industry, and that concentration is at work. For example, companies like Vacasa and its 8,000 properties did not exist before, and a lot of their growth was through mergers and acquisitions. So it's concentrating. And now comes a very important thing. Many vacation rental managers would prefer to remain independent. Who in this room is a vacation rental manager? So stand up, please, vacation rental managers. That will be quick. OK. Raise your hand, those of you who would prefer to remain independent versus being into a, merged into a big corporate thing. That's all of you. So it's 100%. That's easy. Uh, I think very often, those of us who got into vacation rental management did so. You can sit down, sorry. <laughs> Just forgot. Um, so many of us who got into uh, this uh, vacation rental management did so because they saw the opportunity to be entrepreneurs. They did so because they saw the opportunity to be independent. And all things equal, like financials, etc they would prefer to remain independent. So this industry is very fragmented, as Simon said. 
Many of the players of this fragmented industry would like to stay independent. And the issue is we all see that in the vacation rental industry, size matters. So I'm going to go through certain examples and they're quite important that show why it's difficult for a property manager who wants to remain independent to compete with the big players, whether it's the OTAs or the largest companies. And we're going to take it example by example, and then we're going to think together about some solutions to overcome the lack of scale. Let's look at the economics of scale for VR managers. We know that for PPC, pay-per-click advertising on Google, if you're a small property manager and you pay, let's say, two euros to attract a potential guest to your website, well, on your website, if you have 20, 200, or 800 properties, there's a higher risk that you will be out of stock, that your properties will be sold out, especially for the most demanded like uh, periods, like let's say New Year, etc. So if you spend two euros and you don't have the inventory that that visitor wants, you just wasted your two euros. While when Booking.com or HomeAway do invest the same two euros, they have an inventory of thousands of properties so they have a much better chance of converting the guest. So they have a huge advantage linked to skill, and we, or the, small, the smaller managers than the big OTAs, etc., have to overcome this. We are at a disadvantage because we lack scale. And the same thing is worth for PPC. It's more about building the skills, having the time of the people, but it's the same thing. Then, if we look also at loyalty, returning customers, uh, selling again to past guests, well, we have a bit of the same issue. I have a vacation rental company in Prague with, quite a, with 15,000 past guests, and they were quite happy, so we, we do have hopes that one day they will return. But when people plan a city trip like Prague, we have let's say 10, 20% who return often because they love the city, but most people, they do city trips to discover a new destination, and then they will go to another city. Well, here we are at a disadvantage versus portals, uh, portals that uh, know that if the next trip is to another city, they can still sell again to that guest, and again, and again, and again. People might return to Prague, my city, every five years on average, people will maybe take a trip every three or whatever months on average. They can sell again and again to the same guests, so we lack scale. And the example of software, for example, a website and a property management software, plays uh, in the same way. Vacasa has 8,000 units and 80 developers. I've done custom development for my small company in Prague. I can tell you that it costs a lot to develop in-house. And like, if you want to compete with the biggest ones, you lack scale. House cleaners, operational efficiency can be another example. Uh, if the house cleaner is cleaning one of my apartments from nine to 11 in Jungmanova Street, if she has nothing to do until 3 p.m. And if she has another cleanup between 3 and 6, she's not filling her workouts during the day. I have to either pay her more to compensate for that, or, uh, or I will be, uh, be in trouble looking for the house cleaner. If it were a larger company, I could fill in more of the house, but I would still be looking for extra capacity, actually. Let's talk about harmonization, labels, brands. There are inconsistencies in vacation rentals in guest service versus expectations. Simon mentioned it again this morning. I remember like so two or three days ago I was in Paris. I had stayed in Airbnb pre-conference. Uh, Pavel and Kevin, also vacation rental managers, they stayed in an Airbnb and none of us had had a consistent, well-managed experience. We had two keys, two sets of keys for four bedrooms in the apartment, so I, at about 1.30 a.m., 
I had to call my colleagues to wake them up because the video phone was not working. Pavel here, when he asked what's the Wi-Fi code, the 70-year-old uh, gentleman who welcomed him in the apartment showed him like a LAN cable, like a network cable. <laughs> the, and finally, they found the code. It was written in small letters in the back of the modem, etc. Like, yeah, with the box, they managed. But it's just to say that these inconsistencies call for labels or brands that will make the guest save time and know that he will find the toaster, the knives, whatever, etc. And here again, Airbnb has seen this need, they've heard the guest, and they're providing value to their end guest by introducing Airbnb Plus, which is verified for this and that. Someone who takes it will know that under this brand, they will find a certain set of amenities. Again, you can do your best job in terms of having all these things, even on your own website, like on the properties that are advertised on your website, but how do you communicate that to a guest when, uh, when, when he's looking at smaller companies? And in terms of getting united, uh, partnering, etc., cetera, uh, if we want, we were just hearing Mary Lee a little bit ago in this room about short-term regulation and making, getting across the point that we bring value to the city, that we create employment, that, we, uh, that the tourists or the guests we welcome spend money around. Well, in Prague, we set an, a, a local association uh, using uh, many tools so we can share the process. That's already gaining time. And we're working on an infographics that shows you take a typical apartment, you, you calculate, you look at your figures and you say, well, uh, if a rental is for 100, then 15 goes to Airbnb, and this much goes to the cleaning lady, and this much goes to the reservationist, etc. So we create employment, we create wealth, and this is redistributed to various people in the city, and it, through taxes, 25% of this goes to to, uh, well, the city, the state, and everything, and we're trying to create an infographics based on that. Let me see, show you a bit later what we could do better if we get together. So, size matters. We've seen that lack of scale is really an issue, and some have chosen growth and mergers and acquisitions to deal with that. Vacasa, V-Trips, Turnkey, et cetera, their response to that is, let's reach size through growth, through mergers and acquisitions. We've seen the vacation rental managers here all rise and all raise their hands when they said they want to stay independent. And then there's a limit to how much we can grow, like uh, depending on like, your own finances, the opportunities, et cetera. And not all of us will have the plan to acquire many companies, and even less of us will manage <laughs> to do it. So how do you do when you don't want to merge, acquire, or get acquired, and when you do not have the growth that will enable you to compete with HomeAway for the first like uh, listings in Google, for example? So the questions now are, we've already seen, and I could put your pictures of those who stood up, <laughs> that uh, we would prefer to remain independent. What can the property managers do? What will they do? How will this affect other players in the industry? Are the questions I want to tackle with your help? Well, uh, actually, it's not, it's, Getting newer for our industry, but the response when you want the advantages of size, keeping independence, and if you're a fragmented industry or small players, is partnerships, alliances. A partnership or alliance differs deeply from a merger. It differs because there's no capital merge you remain the owner of your, the vacation rental manager remains the owner of his company. No cultures are merged. Many mergers fail because different companies do things differently, 
And there are various ways to do it, but inconsistencies can kill the efficiency. So it's hard to grow for acquisitions because there's a culture issue often that's neglected. And merging organizations can be complicated. Uh, there are plenty of examples in other industries that can show us some of the possible ways. For example, in 1984, Toyota and General Motors partnered. General Motors learned how to produce with the latest methods used in Japan, Kanban, etc. And Toyota learned how to distribute in the US. So when you look at the car industry today, it's organized with big players like Toyota, etc., that kind of uh, are hubs with a network of partners that innovate and integrate. And they favor cooperation and sometimes even competition. That Renault and Peugeot shared a V6 motor that was the same in two cars that were different in everything but the motor. So partnerships can take relatively new forms in the VR space. One thing that's not new will be partners where uh, property management software uh, combines with smart logs to make an integrated offering. One thing that is newer is that vacation rental managers who are not competing in the same destination can share listings, they can share inventory. So for example, I was speaking with Ari, his vacation rentals are in LA. He was saying they get asked about other destinations as a complement, like a lake uh, more in the north, these kind of things. He can share past guests and listings with vacation rental managers that do not compete with him. But what's also newer is, given what I've shown earlier about the lack of scale and uh, the drawbacks it has, is that there could be co-opetition, not competition between vacation rental managers. I was speaking with CJ, who's here, <laughs> and he was saying that like he's, um, he's putting together an alliance with four other vacation rental managers where they share inventory. What can this mean? It can mean, for example, that you will uh, like list your properties and then list the properties also of the other vacation rental managers. And let's say if you're out of stock, but if you've managed to attract a visitor to you, and if he books the company of one of your partner vacation rental managers, you may agree in advance that you will get a 10% commission, which when your properties are sold out is much better than nothing. Um, and I could think of doing the same thing with uh, other vacation rental managers where my vacation rental company is in Prague. If we use the same platform, like the same software like LiveRes, and if there's a feature that allows us to list each other's property, we can do this. But we can also do much more. Let's see how, if we partner, we can challenge the lack of scale and get the better of it. For example, what I've just mentioned is that we could create even regional portals where we get more size, more scale. When we, when we get together, we can do better marketing, we can attract more visitors. In Barcelona, David Aguilar and his wife, Sandra, they're uh, like on the first organic position in Google, that would be the green thingy because uh, she has a marketing agency and they're advertising for their 265 properties plus properties of other vacation rental managers. And they get the scale to uh, compete profitably with uh, many of the giants. They get the scale to be in a good position. And if they had even a larger scale, they might compete for the top of Google. And we would love to create a world community of vacation rental managers with shared listings. I know that in the past, it has been a project at VRMA called The Switch. Who heard of The Switch? Yes, yes. Well, I believe this is going to happen anyway. Uh, we for sure at LiveRes are working at it. We won't be the only ones working at it. I hope we'll do the better version. 
But the important thing is, uh, and I'll go further because this is the same idea and we have little time, but I believe this will happen in a way when you look at, at uh, for example, software development, there are two ways to develop. One is you plan everything and then you execute. And the other one is called agile. It's you do one step, one sprint at a time, two weeks, you do something, two more weeks, you do something else. And I'll get back to it later with the graph. But I believe this kind of creating what was meant to be the switch through alliances will happen one way or another. I believe we can share listings, and I believe this will lead to regional and world portals that will be controlled much more than vacation rental managers than what exists today. And it will have the advantage that we'll be able to share uh, past guests also. And it will have the advantage if we make alliance partnerships, yep, yeah, that we can share some software tools to save money. I was talking, um, talking uh, I was speaking with Steve Milo and he's, he prefers to use an existing platform to save on costs. Developing everything in house is very costly, even when you have 2,400 units. And today's technology makes it possible to have a core, a shared platform, and then through APIs, partners, gateway, to have a certain level of customization <coughs> for any applications you want. I think the operational efficiency and cleaning is very, example, is very interesting too. Uh, you remember I was speaking about the cleaning lady with nothing to do between two cleanups. Well, one thing I can do as a vacation rental manager is agree with a friendly company so that Pavel, whom you've seen before, he will use the cleaning lady for the cleaning in between. But what are the odds that he will need the cleaning lady exactly at that time? I need a broader partnership to make this happen or a broader alliance with more players. And that's where uh, I was mentioning uh, partnering through the API with other applications, other groups. Uh, properly, uh, whom you may have met here, they provide an app, but they also provide a marketplace for cleaning ladies. So that in the time when she cannot work for me and she would like to work, she will find an opportunity with someone who's at the same time, a competitor, but also a colleague, and she will keep working for me and for us, and will, in this way, manage to have more cleaning ladies and less stress finding them. This morning, Simon was speaking about standardization. I just mentioned how Airbnb Plus can be a brand that a small vacation rental player would have trouble competing with, to mention that like we have consistent service, we have the toaster and all, all this. Well, these labels do not have to be imperative standards, but if we manage to agree between ourselves that we will not have 10 names for a hot tub, whirlpool, etc., so that people can easily sort it out, if we manage to uh, define a kind of label that inspires trust, because it will be, yes, in a property, the Wi-Fi code will be quite visible. And we can all agree on that. In the property, there will be at least one key per bedroom. These kind of small things that the guest does not have the time to check on a listing. When you book it, you don't want to spend three hours checking and every little detail. Are there knives? Is there a toaster? All that. We could agree on a label together that will mean the property has all this and that. And we could even make it in a way where the guest sees what's missing versus the label, like on, uh, on when he looks at the listing. You're used to having a toaster. Well, guess what? This listing is great, but no toaster. That's the only difference. Take it or leave it, but at least you know. Same thing with the rental conditions. We could have, like, we could get inspiration from the rental policies that exist so that they will know, I take a property of that kind, I know what I can expect, I know what's different versus what I'm used to, but the guest does not have to read five pages of rental conditions to know what they will expect. 
So there's a lot to gain by working together on this also. And normally, I guess it would be a great topic for a longer discussion, but I have to make sure that we stay on time. <laughs> we have 10 minutes left. You're welcome, Vanessa. <laughs> Let's see also what could happen in terms of branding examples. Uh, if I take a L'Oreal product, in a previous life, I've been working with L'Oreal, you could have the name of the lipstick and its color, then the range, then the brand L'Oreal, then you know it's part of the group L'Oreal if you're an insider. Hotels, you could have a deluxe suite in Marseille Vieux Port Hotel, off Novotel, Hotel, which is part of the group Accor. We could have like, it's the property X by property render manager Y, and it's part of the regional or destination portal Life Pride, for example, and it's part of the world portal Life 10 network. So we would have in this way the strength of a global branding, for example, that would help compete with the much larger players. We could also share past guests, reviews, whitelist, blacklist. Uh, you know, the, uh, I like it very much in Airbnb that thanks to the community and the guest reviews and the reviews of guests by owners, it brings you, when a guest has been validated with good reviews, etc., it brings you a certain level of trust and safety for the property you have to take care of. And I believe we could do it on a much wider scale, uniting like vacation rental managers, OTAs, software players, getting all as a community together to help uh, filter or profile our guests so that we would have less of the nuisances, less of the noise, trouble, etc., that bring us trouble with regulation and that brings the bans, this kind of stuff. So we know how it's today on Airbnb. We could have white lists that would be opt-in to be easy on legal compliance, and that we share. And there could be techniques with the blockchain to share it without sharing all the history of the guest, but saying, hey, I have this guest with that name, maybe that email, that would like to stay in my property. Can I check if, he's, uh, if he has proven by staying in other properties with good reviews that he's not usually a threat? So this is possible. And of course, it will be more complicated to get to some kind of blacklist for legal issues. But maybe with the help of authorities to uh, be good citizens and good neighbors, maybe we can even dream of that one day. And there would be huge value in that, I believe. And speaking about regulation, uh, so we've been developing this great infographic, we are developing this hopefully great infographics that will show how we uh, are valuable to the city, but we have a little budget, like it's, we're a small city, small country, and uh, there are few of us right now, getting more numerous, but like few. If we share between various associations, vacation rental managers, etc. Even like the source files, we can share the idea of showing how the value is split when there's a rental at a certain price. But even sharing like the infographics, etc., might be useful, and then we can finance one on how to reduce the noise, etc. We could make videos that we share. We'll have a lot more visual materials to tell our story to the public so that they will support more the right to do vacation rentals. So I believe there is a huge value in sharing, and if I come back to what we were saying about the distribution, et cetera, the shares versus OTAs, I believe today, the latest figures I saw from Simon were that there was about, in Europe, 70% of bookings come through uh, the OTAs, and 30% are direct for the vacation rental manager. We see the trend and without, if we don't do anything, we can assume that it could be 90 OTAs, 10 vacation rental managers. And I believe that if we manage to make together shared listings, shared regional or destination portals, and a shared word portal, we could have a significant chunk of the market, maybe 20, 30%, and we'll try more, 
that will uh, be more controlled by vacation rental managers. And it's very important because we're very happy that OTAs bring more new guests, new users to our industry. Uh, we love them for that. But we've also seen that in some cases, uh, if that gives them too much power, they might be tempted to take so much that actually they would kill us. <laughs> so we'll all be happy to keep a lever that ensures our independence and our prosperity together. Same thing, I believe that uh, with the software, uh, we'll have competing cores that gather a lot of features in one platform that's updated, uh, that's updated often and with a lot of resources, shared resources, and connecting to various modules through APIs, etc., to enable for a certain level of customization and for uh, also the sharing of, for example, the marketplace of cleaning ladies that uh, properly has. So I really do see a future in that. And in terms of capital, yes, there will be giants, maybe Vacatry, BookBnB, HomeAdvisor, huge groups concentrating and having larger shares of various parts of the value chain. Uh, maybe Google, maybe Amazon will enter the dance. But I believe there will also be a network of partner, partnering vacation rental managers that will also interact with a network of shared suppliers to get the various benefits of scale, skill, and others that will enable them to survive amongst the giants. That's illustrating what I told you before about how I believe this is happening step by step. We, as vacation rental managers, did not manage to plan and execute the switch. Too many people, too many constraints, too hard to do all at once. But I believe that what's happening, for example, with the community of clients slash partners of LiveRes is that you're already getting this kind of gathering of groups of property managers that will actually put resources together to be able to survive, compete, and thrive in uh, an environment with players much bigger than them. And for the questions and discussions, uh, Vanessa will tell me how much time we have left. And I'm afraid it's not much, but you're welcome to uh, come to me and we can have a discussion uh, in the networking break or such. It's OK. Vanessa grants us one or two questions. Please <laughs> use it. <laughs> questions? Come yes, please. Yes. 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 There is. I, I, I totally agree that it's uh, very difficult and that the technology and the tools are key to enable it. And I, I will come back to that. I just want to give another example. Uh, I, at a conference in Barcelona two years ago, I was saying, yeah, let's share past guests. But the problem is we had different softwares. Like uh, I'm friends with Jaume in Barcelona and we would exchange. But let's say just emailing past guests, go to Jaume or sharing a guest or an inventory, if you don't have a technology that makes it standard, easy to automate, to connect, it's hard. And I agree that communities are here. Deborah was telling me that she's starting a community. We all feel this need for a community of vacation rental managers, sharing knowledge and sharing some tools, etc. But if the software does not connect, does not integrate, it's just so damn hard to do it manually that it doesn't work in practice. We have a lot to do, it's complex, we don't. Richard. <laughs> yes. Yes. Maybe, maybe not with streamline in the state of what I know here. <laughs> Uh, 
Right, and to, to, to answer your question, I think on some, I think the cooperation will be, uh, the cooperation can be along a lot of the value chain or on some parts, etc. cetera. And uh, of course, each player will cooperate more with those with whom they have more affinities, those they respect, like more, have the same way of working, the same quality in execution, this kind of stuff. So it might not be, a or X or Y, etc. But on the other hand, there will be parts of the value chain where we find it worth reaching some kinds of standards and harmonization. For example, what I was mentioning, like at some point we could all agree that we'll say a hot tab or a whirlpool and it will make much, much simpler the, uh, the integrations of channels and everything. It will make Vanessa's job easier, it will make your job easier, it will make the job of every vacation rental manager and ultimately every guest easier. And this way, and on such things, I think even companies that uh, do not like each other very much, and you can think of various examples in our industry, have a deep interest in reaching some simplifications, some standardizations that will benefit everyone. There's no, it's pretty much coming to my story of the goals at the beginning. Like there's fighting each other and there's the moment when in a competitive world with huge hotel groups, etc., we have to get better as an industry. And uh, there is, all, there are also our guests ultimately, we are doing this we are to bring value to the guests and get some of that value back from them. Uh, if we keep imposing to the guest that he will have to read for 20 or 30 minutes a property description to know if he gets his toaster and his keys and his knives, we're not doing a great job as an industry to make the guests happy and ultimately benefit from it, both in terms of satisfaction and in terms of financials. So that's what we have to do and we have to do it together. Thank you, Vanessa, nice way to end it. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. <laughs>